welcome back. This is our third interview of the day. We're here with Kristalina Georgieva, who is the CEO of the World Bank. So thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Jeva. Um, so first of all, we can see and read about this every day, how women face challenges when they're at work. So whether that be harassment, unequal pay, or not being allowed to work. So how do you think educating the 130 million girls out of school can improve or um, affect gender equality in the workplace? It will improve it 130 million ways, because when we have girls going to school, staying in school, and actually learning, then there is a much better chance that they would step in life well equipped to get uh, jobs at their home, to know their rights, and to stand up for these rights. Uh, and then they turn into agents of change for themselves, for their families, and the world becomes a better place for everybody, for the girls, but also for the boys, for the, for the women, and, and for the men. For sure. And um, so when girls go to school, they learn more and they earn more. So what advice do you have for girls to ensure that they have a stronger financial future for themselves? Oh. But the, uh, the, the very first thing that the girl needs to do is to understand how she can get her own documentation, identity papers, access to finance, open a bank account, and uh, be forthcoming in terms of defining what is it that she wants to do. Not what people tell her she should want to do, but what is that she wants to do. And then uh, step up, uh, whether she goes to work uh, or becomes an entrepreneur, or she decides that she wants to uh, work with her family, uh, that has to be her choice. Know your rights. Sure. So why do you think it's important for G7 nations to invest in girls' education? Because uh, we currently have a world in which, just like the over half of the population, women face discrimination even in rich countries, and more so in many of the developing countries. What this leads to is a tremendous loss for the whole world. We did a study at the World Bank and we estimated that the fact that women do not always work, do not participate fully in, uh, in the workplace, and they are underpaid for what they do, causes $160 trillion of loss of wealth. So we are two years of GDP poorer because of gender inequality. There are discriminatory laws on the books of 104 countries that prevent women from working where they want to work. There are so many uh, cases when women are abused, harassed, scared, killed. And all of this means that our world is, as a result, poorer, less happy, less productive for everyone. G7 countries have an interest of what? Of global prosperity. They want to have a world of stability. How can you have a world of stability if half of that world is pushed down? You cannot. Yeah. And so just following up with that, uh, what's one commitment that you would like to see from G7 um, countries from the summit? Uh, towards girls' education? To make sure that every girl, everywhere, can get in school, stay in school, and learn. It cannot be a target to get half of the girls that are out of school uh, to be out of school. It has to be a target. Every single girl has to be able to get education. And that is a commitment the G7 leaders can make. And that brings us to the end of this interview. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and stay tuned with the Malala Fund and the World of Women on our social media pages to find out how uh, the G7 nations follow up on girls' education. Thank you so much.